and welcome to your favourite teacher. So I'm going to talk about chapter seven of Animal Farm. It's not going to be pleasant. First things first, we know that the animals are hungry. They've not had a very good harvest and rations are being cut. Now, what happens first is we see the first real instance of a rebellion. And that's very, very, very quickly squashed by Napoleon. The he it's the hens, in fact, because they have to, they're told that they're going to be selling their eggs to get more grain and corn. And they're not happy with it and they think it's like murder. But as with before, Napoleon has his threats. He immediately eliminates all of the hens' rations and basically threatens that anyone helping the hens is going to be put to death. So it's a complete, violent, frightening situation that these animals are in. We've also got this element of deception. And this is really quite representative of in the Soviet Union, where things were hidden and covered up and made, made to seem much better than they actually were. We had Stalin pretending that everything was going really well when actually uh, his five-year plan meant that there was lo there's huge famines that killed absolutely millions, but this was completely covered up in the same way that Napoleon is covering up things to Mr. Wimper and presenting a full storehouse full of food, which actually is mostly filled with sand. Um, just the top layer is actually the food. So it's not going very well. The animals are hungry, but they carry on constantly believing that this life is still better than the one that they had with Mr. Jones. The hens who have refused and have their rations cut, eventually nine of them starve to death, which is just really quite vulgar. And it's it's sort of this form of slavery. It was like earlier on where they could do an extra shift on Sunday and it was voluntary but obviously it's not voluntary because if you don't do it then you would have your rations cut. So it's, it's slavery disguised as freedom and we see that and that really is kind of the theme of this chapter, quite how trapped the animals are in a complete nightmare. It's not at all like old major's dream, his vision. It's not an egalitarian society and all animals are not equal. Pigs are more important, but above all else, Napoleon is leading this dictatorship. So we've got the negotiations between Pilkington or Frederick and Napoleon is doing these, playing them off against each other. And we also have the revelation that in fact, anything that is going wrong is to do with Snowball. Snowball is terrorizing the farm. No one's actually seen Snowball, but of course, anything that goes wrong, he is the scapegoat. And it's a very, very clever tactic of Napoleon and the pigs. So he's using Squealer to put this propaganda around that Snowball is sneaking into the farm at night and causing all this mayhem. Actually, this sort of gives the animals a sense of uh, unification as they well, unite against Snowball. He's this powerful, invisible enemy. And it, it's quite a very, it's a very successful technique to make people who are struggling believe in a common enemy, even if that enemy doesn't exist, because they then fear that enemy more than perhaps things that are going on right in front of them. And we see that as the chapter goes on more lies are spread, the rules are changing, they're being rewritten, and history is being rewritten as well. So the Battle of the Cowshed, even though they, even though Boxer can sort of remember that Snowball was good, the new party line is that Snowball was in league with Jones from the start. And anyone that questions that is immediately met with growling dogs so it's it's very much a two-pronged attack where we've got playing on the animals naivety and manipulating them through the use of squealer and then the second is just flat out intimidation we've just got the violence that follows anyone that remotely does anything to question napoleon's authority we have the quite barbaric and hideous incident where we have the confessions and the executions of the animals. So these animals confess 
to crimes that I think the reader probably doesn't believe to be true. Napoleon is sort of forcing these confessions on the traitors and executing them, which is instilling a huge sense of fear and also breaking up any groups that might threaten him, that might stand against him. This scene, Orwell describes this part from Clover's point of view and it's really quite sad as she's trying to understand how Animal Farm became this sort of a place and um, and at the end of the chapter where the animals had are just almost beaten down from what they've seen oh let's also not forget to talk about the the dogs the dogs go for boxer boxer who has been ult- the ultimate sacrifice of this farm constantly working hard never really questioned napoleon his it was just the fact that he sort of remembered in the battle of the cowshed snowball was good but of course once it was explained that napoleon has said this he then goes back to believing that napoleon is right so it was almost just a quiver of independent thought that was really disliked and these dogs have been set on him but his strength is still holds him true there as he doesn't as the dogs aren't able to defeat him and of course Boxer just assumes that this is a mistake and looks to Napoleon and Napoleon sort of says, you know, let the dogs go. So Clover is still blindly loyal to Napoleon as is Boxer and a number of the others. But she is thinking back and remembering that this is their farm. And at the end of the chapter, they're looking down and she can't, Orwell sort of describes it saying that she can't actually voice these thoughts. So the only thing that she and the others can do is just sing Beasts of England and that's the only way that they can express that perhaps this isn't the same vision that they were sold many moons ago and then we have the the final real nail in the coffin here that this dream is dead when the song the thing that really held them all together united them was this beast of england tune which is now forbidden and Again, that's because I think in that tune, if we go back and look at the lyrics of Beasts of England, it speaks about oppression. And I think if they were to really think about those lyrics, they would see that humans have just been replaced by pigs. And that's something that Napoleon can't have them see. And it's something that Squealer there, therefore is used as the mouthpiece again to shut that down. Um, in the same way that all outside information in a, in a society like this so communist russia back then uh, perhaps communist sort of north korea now anything that potentially threatens the status quo is forbidden so anything that you can any book that has information on it that might in any way cause someone to question something different it's forbidden so we see that here at the end of chapter seven it's quite a sad chapter I think and really quite brutal and shows just the evil violent nature of Napoleon you know animals who were never supposed to hurt one another are now just being executed for crimes that we the reader know are absolute nonsense 